woke up in January one night with high fever. He was vomiting and uh, he was just really sick. They did a spinal tap later that night and diagnosed him with uh, bacterial, it was a pneumococcal meningitis. So he was hospitalized for almost three weeks at Children's Hospital here and then we were home for almost two weeks before we started noticing that he wasn't really responding to sounds and we actually set off the fire alarm or the smoke detector and uh, which is really loud and he didn't budge. We already had a hearing test set uh, here in audiology and uh, it was confirmed by their test that he was he had uh, profound hearing loss on both sides. When you hear some of these stories of children from uh, their symptoms from meningitis, um, the hearing loss is really a blessing. Um, it was something that we could fix. Um, many, many children lose their arms, lose their legs, um, go blind, or die. So um, the hearing loss is definitely a blessing for us. Normally our incision, we kind of... Dr. Meyer explained that our options were two, really. He could remain deaf or we could do the cochlear implants. Hearing aids weren't, were not an option. So at that point, he just explained that there was a, a surgical portion, you know, and it would be, you know, obviously heavy sedation, maybe an all-day surgery to do both ears. And then we would have to wait two to three weeks to actually have the external portion hooked up to begin getting sound in. Since the surgery, no. since the hookup on April 28th, He's been coming to see um, Nevitt for speech pathology every week at first, and now we've cut back to once a month. He turned to that immediately. And he also sees Meredith in audiology to, to get in the sound booth to make sure he gets a response from both ears. And she's been tuning the implants and turning them up as needed. I was ecstatic when he started to vocalize. Um, it just seemed like it was overnight. He's really starting to respond to to other sounds. And um, if he hears someone clap, clap, clap on the TV, he will then clap. Um, and that was emotional for me to, to see that he really could hear and he recognized it. So it's a good happy. <laughs> good. From here, we're just going to continue with speech therapy at home twice a week. It's just, you know, repetition over and over again to get him to, to make different sounds. He can now hear the implants are going to allow him to integrate with children his own age and um, we, we, we are hoping for the best that he'll, he'll have a normal childhood just as any other child would um, with his implants. For more information or to make an appointment, call MUSC Health at 843-792-1414 or log on to muschealth.com.